Welcome cellists, my name is Mia the Creative Cellist and I'd like to welcome you to my webinar How to Play Cello with More Focus, Flexibility and Freedom Without Increasing Your Practice Time. <laughs> I'd like to share some responses from people who watched my last presentation and who really enjoyed the session so that you know that you're in the right place. Rachel says, thank you for a helpful and informative session. Angela says, this was a great experience. I look forward to learning more, especially the meditations that are coming soon. Betsy says, thank you for this. And Claire says, I really enjoyed it. In today's presentation, we're going to cover three secrets that will help you think about cello practice in a whole new way. The first secret is how to apply a simple mind and body technique to quickly achieve laser focus so that you can practice for longer with less pain and tension. I know that pain and tension is a big problem for lots of cellists, whether you're an older cellist that's dealing with arthritis or a younger cellist who's working on virtuosic music and needing ways to reduce your tension so that you can play for longer. Secret number two is how to make fast progress even if you have physical limitations and even if you have a busy life. And if you're a professional cellist, this secret's gonna work for you as well. And secret number three is how to optimize your cello practice and have fun so that you have time for the rest of your life. And who doesn't want that? So this presentation is for different kinds of cellists. If you're an amateur cellist, a professional cellist, a music teacher, if you're the parent of a cello student, or if you have a cellist in your life, or if you're just a person who's curious about different mind and body techniques to decrease tension in your playing and improve your practice habits, then this webinar is for you. So this training is gonna be different from other types of training that you might've seen on the internet. There's not gonna be any traditional practice advice. I'm not gonna be telling you to practice scales or technical exercises or spend more time practicing. The methods that I'm gonna be showing you and the mindsets that we're gonna talk about are gonna help you no matter what level of cello player you are. And the goals for this web class are that you'll have practical tools that you can start using today to release tension in your playing and increase your creativity. You'll understand the mindset that will set you up to play with laser focus, flexibility, and freedom. You're gonna understand what the next steps are to leveling up your cello playing. You'll feel motivated to try out these skills right away. And if you're a teacher, you're going to have tools that you can use with even your most hard to teach students. If you stay until the end of the webinar, which is about 30 minutes, I'm gonna give you a free PDF guide called Six Ways to Play the Cello with Less Tension and More Focus. And this is a comprehensive guide that I created to help cellists with their most common tension and focus problems. Some of my students have really enjoyed this PDF guide. Jolene, for example, says, thank you. These are great ideas that I'm gonna incorporate into my practice. So I really need your attention for this. The tips and tricks that we're gonna be talking about and the mindset practice won't work if you're distracted. So if you're a cello player or an educator and you're serious about playing with more focus, flexibility, and freedom with less tension, then this presentation could change the way that you think about your cello practice forever. You need to turn off your devices and find a quiet place to pay attention. So let me introduce myself. My name is Marian Elizabeth Arthur, and in the music world, people know me as Mia the Creative Cellist. I've worked with a number of organizations that you can see on the screen and received awards, grants, and credentials from a lot of these organizations. I hold a degree in cello performance from the University of Toronto, and I have a number of teaching certificates from the Royal Conservatory of Music and the Suzuki Association of the Americas. Just so that you know that I am a legit cello teacher and the things that I'm gonna be talking to you about are really gonna help you. When I was a university music student, something happened to me that changed the way that I approach music and cello playing forever. It was my very first month of university and I suffered a quite serious injury in my left hand. I was developing tendonitis through the left side of my hand and into my pinky and all the way down to my elbow where I was developing tennis elbow or what I like to call it cello elbow. 
at the time, I was working on a study that my teacher had, had assigned. And the study was from the very famous book of studies by David Popper called The High School of Cello Playing. And many of you may have heard of this book or even be working on studies from this book. These studies are traditionally assigned to advanced cellists to increase strength and flexibility in their hands and to help them with their tuning and endurance. But working on this study left me unable to play for a whole month due to the fact that I was using improper technique to put down my pinky, which created an injury all throughout my left hand and into my elbow. This was the moment that I realized I needed to get smart about the way that I was practicing or I wouldn't be able to keep doing what I love the most. So I began a journey to understand why I had injured myself and how I could prevent this from happening in the future. That journey took me on a path that ultimately led me to reject pra traditional practice wisdom and the unhealthy culture of pushing through pain to pursue excellence in music. And it's led me to a path that's allowed me to play with greater focus, freedom and flexibility and increase my satisfaction with playing the cello and my mastery of the instrument more than I ever could have imagined when I started out. So the moment that I figured out how to make these changes, I drastically reduced tension in my playing and increased my mastery of playing. And I got really excited about this and I wanted to share this knowledge with other cello players. So for example, Valerie is one of the players that I've been working with that experiences tension and lack of motivation in practice. And she wrote to me re recently after working with me and she said that she has less neck pain and more fluidity. Once I figured out this path and the secrets that I'm gonna share with you, I started teaching it to more and more people. And then more and more cellists were help asking me for help. There was a wide range of problems that cellists were having with their playing. And these cellists were amateur cellists, professional cellists, students, cellists of all kinds. So some of the problems that they were having that I realized I could help with were things like hand and arm pain, shoulder and back pain, anxiety and performance stress, tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, arthritis, small fingers and hands, difficulty with memorizing music, lack of motivation and creative inspiration, fear of improvising, lack of confidence, not enough money for a proper teacher, not enough time to practice, and not knowing how to help themselves when they were experiencing difficulty in their practice. So I decided that I wanted to help as many cello players as possible using the methods that I'd learned to heal myself, improve my own focus and endurance, and play with greater mastery, musicality, and expression, and joy. I'm going to share these secrets with you in a moment that are gonna change your cello life forever. But what I'd like you to do before we do this is take a deep breath, Close your eyes and imagine the following future. Your body doesn't hurt when you play the cello. You don't have to spend hours practicing. You know the exact next step you need to take to improve your playing. You can quickly release your tension on the fly and you don't have to stop. You feel motivated to practice. You don't feel confused about what to practice. Your creativity and musical expression increase. You feel confident and focused learning new music. You learn to control your anxiety and do your best performances on stage. And you can get the expert advice that you need whenever you need it. So let's go back to that story that I was telling you about earlier. So remember when I injured myself and I knew that right then and there, I had to find a better way to improve my focus, my flexibility and my freedom on the cello. So one thing I did was starting to imagine how different things could be if I studied and learned from every expert that I could find in every area of human behavior, mind and body techniques and performance. And this is what's going to help you. This knowledge is going to help you with your cello playing. how to apply a simple mind and body technique to quickly achieve laser focus that you can practice for longer with less pain and tension. Now that seems like a tall order, right? So let me tell you about this powerful tool. But first of all, what I'd like you to do is stop this video, grab a pen and paper, and write this down so that you can try it later. So as a young cellist, I envied the power and effortless sound of the great cellists of history like Jacqueline Dupre, and Yo-Yo Ma. I thought that 
I could never achieve such beautiful sound and effortless grace. But after I injured myself, something happened and I realized that beautiful sound was never going to come from trying. So normally when we sit down to practice, we do a bunch of technical exercises and we put in a lot of effort. And as we put in that effort into our instruments, our bodies get tighter and tighter and tighter and that's why we start experiencing pain. But what I realize is that creating this beautiful sound requires a constant letting go as you play. And you have to be constantly letting go as you're practicing and playing. Leaning back, breathing, allowing your body to be tall and strong, and not constantly putting all the energy into your playing, trying harder and harder. So what I learned is that creating beautiful sound requires a complete lack of effort. And I know that sounds really strange and really counterintuitive, but stick with me. In yoga, they call this concept effortless effort. And it's something that changed the way that I practice forever. Everything I did became easier. Because instead of focusing on what was hard about what I was doing, I started focusing on what was working well and what was going well. And I started focusing on relaxing my body. And every single time I felt frustration building up or tension building up, I would stop, breathe, and then continue. So if you remember Valerie, one of my students who was experiencing neck pain and a lack of motivation, once she started doing this, once she started stopping herself every time she felt tension or frustration of any kind in her playing, she reported that after doing this for just a few weeks, she started experiencing much less neck pain and much more fluidity in her playing. So how are you going to apply effortless effort to your next practice? So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of music that you're working on it can be anything. And I would recommend something that is not too hard and not too easy for you. So something in kind of the middle range, something you're really familiar with. And what I'd like you to do is every time you are playing this piece and you feel any kind of tension, so you have to really tune into your body, any time you feel any tension or any pain in anywhere in your body, you're going to stop. And once you stop, you're going to sit up tall Roll back your shoulders and take five really slow, deep breaths. And this sounds very simple, but it can be very, very transformative for your practice. So what you do once you've taken your five deep breaths is that you try the music again. But this time what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a smaller chunk of it. So let's say you played 16 bars before you felt the tension build up. You're gonna take eight bars of the piece and then you're gonna play it again just like you did before, but at a much slower speed. And once you have played it at a slower speed, the smaller part, you're going to continue playing. And once you feel tension again, you're gonna stop, take five breaths, and then go back and play it again. And each time you play, you're going to actually play smaller chunks of the piece. And what you're doing is you're training your body to associate playing with total lack of effort. So what you might find when you're doing this is that there's gonna be parts of the pieces where there might be just two notes that you find are difficult to play. It might be a really big shift, or it might be that those two notes happen really quickly. So if this is the case and you pinpoint that area where you are feeling pain and tension, you might need to stop and play just those two notes back and forth with very deep breaths at a very slow speed. And if you apply this concept of effortless effort into all your practices, you're going to quickly see a change in your focus and your endurance. And I promise you, you're going to experience less pain. At first, it might seem like a very slow practice. And that's the idea because we're really slowing everything down to notice what's happening in our bodies as we play. So secret number one, effortless effort is all about noticing and observing what's going on when you play. 
secret number two, how are you going to make fast progress, even if you have a super busy life or you have physical limitations in your body? And many of my students do have these physical limitations. They have small hands, they have misshapen fingers, they might be older. Uh, many of them are just so busy with children and husbands and they have many things going on in their life. But you can still make fast progress. You just have to begin, you just have to get smart about it. So uh, let me tell you a story about this. A little while ago, a woman called Jody reached out to me. She hadn't played the cello since she was a teenager and she had a son with learning difficulties and a very busy work and home life. She wanted to start playing again, but she couldn't imagine how she would develop the time that she needed to make progress. So I taught her a method that helped her to be able to move from a beginner to an intermediate level of playing very quickly, even though she had a real lack of time to practice. And what this tool is, is a mindset tool called one point practice. And one point practice is gonna take a lot of the confusion out of your practice and allow you to make step-by-step -step very efficient progress, even if you have a very small amount of time. So I learned this method of practicing from a master Suzuki cello instructor called Susan Walker at a summer institute that I attended a number of years ago. And Susan Walker actually studied with the master himself, Suzuki, in Japan. And she taught me this way of thinking about your practice that takes all of the confusion and all of the guesswork out of it. So after doing some research, what I realized was that one point practice is another form of a productivity method that has lots of research behind it called single tasking. And if you master this idea of single tasking, not only are you gonna master your cello, but you're gonna start to master other things in your life as well. So there's a myth out there that we need to do a lot of different things at the same time to be able to do them quickly and well. Many people uh, believe that if they multitask, they're gonna get more stuff done. But actually, science has shown that this is simply not true. And those who make the best progress in all areas of their lives have mastered the idea of single tasking, doing one thing at a time, just one thing. And I I've noticed as I teach cello students that a lot of them, when they're practicing, they're thinking about multiple things at the same time. They might be thinking about left hand fingering, they might be thinking about shifting. They're thinking about what they're doing with their bowing. They're thinking about the dynamics. And those are just the musical things that they might be thinking about. Sometimes they're thinking about something that they have to do later in the day. Or they're thinking about taking their dog to the vet. So if you want to make progress on your cello, and even if you only have five minutes a day, you can make very good progress if you choose one thing that you're going to focus on. So for example, if you're multitasking, here's some things that can get you in trouble. And I see this all the time at all levels of professional playing and amateur playing, it doesn't matter. I see people trying to get the notes and rhythms correct on a piece of music that they've never played before, trying to get both those things happening at the same time. They try to add dynamics to a piece before they've learned the fundamental parts of the piece. They try to add articulations and bowing patterns before they've mastered shifting. And they play at the written speed before listening to the music or learning any of the notes. And these things just set you up for frustration, for having to backpedal in your practice. So what you're gonna do, or what you should be doing, is embracing single tasking. And this is how you can single task in your music to make very fast progress, even if you don't really have a lot of time to practice. For example, you could listen to the music that you're gonna be playing and listen to it multiple times before you try playing it. And what this means is that you can take the music, so you have a recording of the music, and you can be doing other things in your life, like you could be doing the dishes or walking your dog or even at work, but you're listening to the music that you're going to be learning later. And this will be amazing for your progress. You'll notice when you sit down to play the piece that you have a familiarity with it that you didn't before. Another thing you can do is clap or tap the rhythm of a piece before adding notes. There's so many people that will sit down with a new piece of music and not 
have any idea what the rhythm is. So sit down with your piece of music and clap it out. And you're going to find right away, if there's rhythms that you don't understand, there's no point in trying to do dynamics and the notes until you have those rhythms down. Another example of single tasking would be to practice things only with your bow arm or only with your left hand fingers. A lot of people try to put those two things together too fast. And this is something that I noticed that piano players are really good at. Piano players practice left hand, they practice right hand, they put the two together. But for some reason, string players like to try to put it all together all at the same time. Try separating those two things when you practice. And another example of single tasking that works really well is taking a shift like a really big shift. So you have to go from a C on the A string and you're gonna go all the way up here. Try taking just those two notes and shifting them back and forth between the two notes. And don't add anything else. Don't add the notes before the shift. Don't add the notes afterwards. Just those two notes. And don't even add the bow. Just try plucking the two notes back and forth. You're gonna make much faster progress. And these things, these are things you can do in minutes a day. So how to optimize your cello practice and have fun so you have more time for the rest of your life. We're all really busy and we want to have fun. The point of playing the cello is to have fun and to express yourself musically and creatively. So how do you do that? How do you optimize your cello practice? Well, we've already talked about two things we can do, right? We've already talked about relaxing and stopping when you start to feel any tension. And we've talked about one point practice where you pick one thing at a time to focus on. What else can we do to optimize our cello practice? So let me tell you a story. So when I was in university, I had started to teach myself how to practice efficiently. This wasn't something that I learned from teachers because many teachers don't concentrate on this area. They don't discuss how to go about practicing well or how to develop really good practice habits. They just give you music to learn, they'll help you um, with different parts of the music, what to do technically. But this mindset where you learn how to practice properly is actually the key to developing yourself as a cellist. So I was learning to do this and life threw me another curveball. I had a baby in my second year of university in the middle of a demanding performance degree. And I could no longer practice four or five hours a day. It just wasn't possible. I had to get the same amount of work done that I would get done in four or five hours into two hours. So there was no time to waste. But losing this time was actually the best thing that ever happened to me. It was kind of trial by fire. And in order to graduate, I really needed to get organized and prior prioritize what was important to me. And my focus became laser sharp. My mentor at the time was Winona Zelenka, who's the associate principal cellist of the Toronto Symphony. And her wisdom helped me at a time where I was really struggling and feeling really overwhelmed. What she said to me, she's had three pieces of advice that I've never really forgotten. One of them was, and they seem like very broad advice, but when you take the, these pieces of advice and you apply them to your cello playing, some amazing things happen. So what she said was, do what makes you happy. Life goes fast. Don't compare yourself to others and always ask for help when you need it. So let's talk about doing what makes you happy as it applies to the cello. What does that mean? So take, for example, if you uh, had learned the D major scale, right? D major scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Right? So if you've learned that scale, you're pretty familiar with it, but you find that you don't want to play that scale in your practice. It's boring, right? To go up and down and up and down. What you can do is take the notes of the scale and play with them. Make something up. Create something. So there's eight notes in that scale. So take those notes and play them in whatever order you want, right? <laughs> together in a way that makes you happy. There's always another approach to something. If you're not enjoying something that you're doing, you can always find a way to do it in a different way. 
So the second idea that Winona gave me was to not compare yourself to others. And what does that mean in the context of being a cellist? You'll probably find that you are your biggest critic. And usually that's because you're comparing yourself to other players that play something in a way that you think is better than the way that you're playing it. So I found that the antidote to this is to find your unique musical voice. And learning to do things like improvising can really help with that. Improvising or composing or experimenting with different sounds. And if you do this, you're not going to be comparing yourself to others because you're going to be developing your own unique musical voice. And even if you're learning the standard repertoire or learning classical pieces, you can find a way to make those pieces your own. And I strongly encourage you, when you're playing a piece of music, really ask yourself, what is it that I like about this piece of music? What is it that brings me joy about playing this piece of music? And if you really can't find anything that you enjoy, you don't like how the piece sounds, you don't like playing it, then just don't play it. The third piece of advice that Winona gave me is a very simple but powerful piece of advice. So really take this in. Ask for help when you need it. I've met many cellists who try to teach themselves how to play, watching YouTube videos and talking to other cellists who are learning to play, but this usually sets you yourself up for some really bad playing habits. And even if you do have a teacher, it's really important to try and expand your base of knowledge by working with other teachers. I personally have learned from dozens of masters like Winona and to get all those different perspectives helps me be well-rounded, proficient, and relaxed and to have all that knowledge that I can draw on. So I can't stress this enough. Ask for help when you need it. Using Winona's wisdom and encouragement and my skills from effortless effort and mastering the art of single tasking, I was able to graduate from a really demanding high caliber performance program despite having very little time to practice. And as soon as I graduated, I was able to self-produce my first full-length album. I toured across Canada and I've been increasing my skills ever since, particularly in the area of working with adult cellists. I've gone on to record albums and to have a successful teaching career, despite all these challenges. So this mindset training, though not specific techniques on the cello, and we will get to those, but this mindset training where you think about how you're practicing, this is very powerful stuff and you really want to take this into consideration and think about how you're approaching your cello practice. So if these ideas are resonating with you and you'd like to get more deeply into the specifics of using mind and body techniques to improve your cello playing, I'd like to introduce you to an online course that I created called Cello Yoga. It's the complete mind and body program to play the cello with total freedom. And I'm really excited about this course and I'd like to introduce it to you now. guys, let's go over the details of getting a cello yoga membership and what that means for you. So this is what you're going to get with the program. You're going to get lifetime access to 20 research-based and interactive video trainings so that you can play with more focus, endurance, and freedom, and eliminate pain and tension from your playing, even if you're a beginner or even if you've been playing for years. And this is valued about $997. So let me tell you a little bit about this. After I held my first workshop on these methods online, the overwhelming positive feedback convinced me to put these lessons into an on-demand system so the cellist could revisit the topics over and over. I created five modules of over 20 step-by-step -step videos showing cellists exactly what to do to achieve total freedom in their playing. These are all included in cello yoga and I just keep adding videos all the time. So as well as the videos, you're also going to get a collection of high quality PDF worksheets and resources so you can track your progress and deeply absorb your learning. And these are worth about $80. So this is the PDF Reflection Journal Tracker and Workbook. 
cellists told me that they wanted to be able to track and record their progress. It can be difficult at private lessons to take notes. So to help people who really want to learn, I created a high quality set of PDF tracking and reflection resources that cellists can download and use alongside the video lesson. So as well as the 20 over 20 research based and interactive videos, as well as the PDF worksheets, you're also going to get a lifetime access to cello yoga private masterclass, which is an online masterclass on Facebook open 24 seven so that you can receive fast expert advice, ask any questions you have about the cello yoga program. And this is a lifetime access worth $997. So I've often heard my students tell me that they wish they had a teacher there in the room when they were practicing. Questions often come up that they have to wait for their next lesson to get them answered. In this private masterclass, you can ask any question and receive an answer within hours. And this is also a group for you to share your learning experience with other cellists dedicated to your craft as you. So as well as the videos, the PDF worksheets, the private masterclass, you're also going to get free lifetime access to all my cello yoga online workshops. And currently I've been doing these about twice a year, but the plan is to increase them to about once a month. So the big positive response that I got from my first worldwide workshop on how to play the cello pain intention free convinced me that I wanted to host more of these. Your membership to cello yoga comes with a lifetime free pass to all my workshops, covering the most up to date information on playing the cello with total freedom and practical steps that you can use in your everyday practice. And here's some great positive reviews about that workshop. So you're going to get the videos, you're going to get the PDF worksheets, you're going to get the private masterclass, you're going to get the lifetime access to the online workshops. And as well as that, you're going to get a free consultation with me, Mia the Creative Cellist, by either email or video conference so that we can identify your strongest area of need in your cello playing. And this is worth $197 value. So when I started answering questions for cellists, I realized quickly that everyone had unique challenges. It was sometimes hard for them to pinpoint the one area of focus that could help them the most. But in one conversation, I could put them on the right path and provide clarity. And I decided that I would talk to every cellist in my program individually to help them move forward in the best way. As well as all of this content worth over $3,268, I have some amazing bonuses for you. But let's think about this for a second. If you only got what I've just offered you over worth over $3,000, do you think that this would help you play with more focus, flexibility, and freedom? Well, I have some more stuff for you as well, and this is really, really cool stuff, so listen up. So bonus number one is a collection of meditative cello music composed by me to help you focus and support your tension-free practice worth $47. When I first started doing my research about mindful techniques to improve cello playing, I discovered that listening to meditative music was one of the best science-based ways to reduce tension in the body. And as a musician, playing long tones over drones is universally recognized as one of the best ways to improve intonation and sound. So I decided to combine these two and create special meditative tracks for cellists to play along to. When you combine the methods that you're going to learn in cello yoga with the practice of the meditative tracks included, I'm really confident that your attention will disappear and your musicality will soar. So bonus number two is a collection of custom sheet music to encourage and inspire your new playing habits worth $80. While it's helpful to explore new ideas and techniques while following along with a video, it's also great for visual learners to have a guide to what they're learning. Each piece of sheet music in the Cello Yoga program supports a specific experiment or musical idea to improve your playing and reduce tension. You can think of these as games, and they're a lot of fun. They're designed to increase your creativity and get you thinking in different ways about your cello playing. Each piece illustrates a specific idea and is open-ended so you can use them to create your own music, which is a fundamental part of learning to play with freedom. So it's now up to you to make a choice. You can either do nothing or you can receive amazing value with this amazing package. This is a system that's transformed myself and others. And after this video, you're going to see a roll of reviews by cello yogis who are already in the program and enjoying the benefits. Even if you hired a private coach, and even if that was even one-tenth as cutting edge as what I've put together for you today, and you spent less than eight hours with them, you would spend twice as much money as you're going to spend on this program or more. The crazy thing is you wouldn't ever be able to revisit the material or be able to ask them unlimited questions forever or have the foundations that you could return to again and again like you will in the cello yoga program. So you can see why this would be a really good deal even if I charged $3,000.
Today, because we're doing a limited time seasonal promotion, we want others to experience this program and then use their positive experience to help us promote it even more. So we're offering this program at a really special price. If you visit cellogo.com, you'll find the special price that gives you lifetime access to cello yoga today. And stick around to see the reviews from some of the players who are already in the cello yoga program. Thank you.